our contributions in education will be our legacy in this industry. Whether it's through live education or maybe through social media, we're always trying to make a personal connection with you, the learner. At Sanvia, we believe our smile is our business card and our personality is our logo. And how we make people feel after you experience our education and tools is our trade. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us, my friends, and be a part of the Sandia community. That's right. Join us and be part of the Sandia community. Thanks for being a part of the community this morning. I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Sandia. And today we have a fantastic show with rock and roll hair. Yeah, like my oh, other side, guitar in the background, rock and roll. <laughs> so I'm super excited for it. I know that. Um, anyway, before we get rolling, just want to talk about a few things coming up. Um, please don't miss tomorrow. This uh, this calendar is showing you things that have already passed, but tomorrow we have Wellness Wednesday with our good friend, Steve Gomez. Steve Gomez is a fantastic business coach, trainer, author. You definitely don't want to miss that. So tune in tomorrow, Wellness Wednesday, I'll be hosting. And October 8th, we have a special event. Um, if you are a student at one of our partner schools, you have an opportunity to get private education with Sam and myself. And if you are part of a school system, you do have an opportunity to come and hang out with us to kind of check out what we're doing with our schools. If you're interested, just contact Kurt at SamVia.com and he will give you information about that. So, we also have some killer promos coming up. Um, we just released the Midnight Blues Special Edition, dryer and iron. We've got great shear sales going on, dryer sales. We have a huge giveaway. Check out the website for more information on that. <sighs> Lots of information, right? Man, but what'd you come here for? You came here to learn rock and roll hair. So. Our good friend, Manda Ziegelman. Manda, actually, the first time we met Manda was at a, at a hair show. And they just come in with so much energy, so much life, so much spirit, and just total support. They showed up at the booth like, yeah, what can I do for you? Can I just hang out? Can I do something? Can I, like, help stock shelves? What can I do? That's what gets you noticed. If there's any of you out there that are looking for opportunity, that's the kind of stuff that gets you noticed. But Amanda has 15 years of experience. Amanda has been working in Portland and Seattle for quite a long time. Definitely has all the edge that you can handle and brings it to every guest. Definitely unconventional. They're an influencer for trending looks that aren't for the faint of heart sometimes. And there are going to be things that challenge you today, which is one of the greatest things that Amanda's going to bring to us. But man has been a huge mentor, a junior stylist, um, teaching hands-on workshops at elite salons. Been, um, they've worked at LA Fashion Week. The list goes on and on and on. That's enough. You, you get the idea. Manda rules. So please put your hands together. Throw out some hearts. Huge support. Manda Ziegelman. Thank you. Gosh, it is with such deep gratitude to be here with all of you today. When I think about Sam Via, I go back to a hair show in 2011 and like mind blown. Watching Sam's passion on stage was so inspiring. The way he simply yet clearly was sharing such helpful information on how to do our job better. It, it lifted my spirit. It gave me hope for this career and that it can be a meaningful one and that we could be better. So from that moment, I went on to take every class with Sam, you know, and fast forward to now working behind the scenes with Sam and you guys, uh, big hair shows like ISSE recently in Long Beach and ABS in Chicago. 
gosh, for almost 10 years now, that, that moment stands out and it definitely drove me on the path that I'm on to, onto today and my career has been forever changed. So thank you guys so much. I'm going to get emotional. This is not an uh -huh. class. This is rock and roll. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> hey, <laughs> rock and rollers cry. I've seen it happen. It, We're sensitive. I consider myself a rock and roller and I enjoy good crime in this. So. Oh. So just out, everybody out there, you know, I want you to know that education is my passion, like most of us. Hairdressing is our craft. And I believe in us as an industry and also an artist supporting artist. So all my friends out there, type in artist supporting artist if you're on board. I know you are. Yes. That's right. you know, together, together, we can make this world a better place. We can change things. We have the power to transform lives. So if you believe in us too, Type in the chat, we can change things. We can change things. Yes. Yeah. Man, um, by the way, not to make you more nervous, but yeah. I just want to let you know, you've got like an all-star cast tuning in. You've got Jorge, you've got Kia Neal, you've got like some rock stars of the industry and in tuning in to check you out today. But you also have people watching from Pakistan, Lebanon, Brazil, Sweden, your homie Amanda from Beauty School's watching. So you have got such a crew, but I'm not gonna stay on screen too much longer because I know you have a ton of content. I'm gonna jump off here and let you do your thing, okay? Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Gosh, you guys, like wherever you are on your hair journey, I just want you to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time out of your life and investing in our craft, elevating the industry by pushing things and maybe pushing things like just out of the norm a little bit. We are in it. So all are welcome here, guys. I'm honored to share my raw, freaky rock and roll self. So let's just do the damn thing. So we've already washed our guest. She is, we've already, already consulted. We've established like, what's your vibe? And we're gonna take it from there. Um, first things first, section front to back, easy. Now to speak to all my talented hairdressers out there that have a certain language of principle-based design and all the technical terms, I'm coming from a place of art and feeling it's an emotion it's going to be kind of raw unplugged and underground today so feel my vibe please bear with me but i did make a super huge effort to give you technical folks out there some some a way to simplify the sectioning here so starting off fringe then we do face then we do layers and then we do length so type in the chat bar F F L L. Type it in there. It's got a nice ring to it, right? Oh, and one more thing. Let's do this so we can we can see a little bit better. But actually, you know, there's there's one thing I just like more than most, and that's hollow, vapid, shallow education. So I think it's important to know the why and where behind things and where they come from. So if you're open to a little bit, just a touch of rock and roll history, type in the chat bar, I'm deep. Type it in. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the 1970s. Jane Fonda. Uh, she was known as a blonde bombshell. Her haircut ruled her for years. So she went to a barber by the name of Paul McGregor and there's this iconic mugshot of Jane with her fresh cut shag that literally started a beauty revolution. So this cut was created to be unisex. It was created to be easy, a wash and go, a wash and wear look. So type in the chat your favorite like rock and roll shags, mullets, or any iconic shag out there. Type it in. Oh yeah, Fleetwood Mac y'all, Stevie Nicks. The ultimate shag bag, babe. The iconic, shaggy, gypsy hair. Oh yeah, and let's talk about Debbie Harry, another classic one. This album, Parallel Lines, is a classic. She's got that beautiful flip going on. And Debbie Harry has 
been inspiring people for years. Let's talk to now Miley Cyrus just covered Heart of Glass, which is on this album. I prefer the classic. And then my ultimate crush, Joan Jett, rock and roll babe, who's constantly going between mullet and shag. And when you combine them, it is a shag let. I love Joan Jett. She's my favorite. Do you love rock and roll too, Andrew? I love rock and roll. <laughs> Put another dime in the jukebox, baby. Okay, guys, so sectioning the hair. First, we're doing the fringe, and we're gonna use a razor. What's really important to do is, in front of your guests, pop that razor in so you see that you're using a new one every time. Now, the fringe is the ultimate statement piece. It is the ultimate accessory. You can tell such a tale with what frames your face. So I'm gonna start by carving that in. A simple triangle section in the front for a fringe. I'm gonna clip the hair that I'm not cutting out of the way. And for you visual technical people out there, this is what we're gonna cut. Now, I wanna ask the, the audience out there, shall we go short fringe, long fringe? Andrew, what are they, what are they wanting? Let's see, let's watch what, what comes in. I know what my vote is, but I don't wanna sway them, so I'm gonna wait and see, wait and see. First couple answers are gonna win. Come on, let's see them. Short, oh! Haley yeah. went long, Carnelli went short. Oh my gosh, it's like dead even. I think it's short. I think short wins. Short and medium is mainly what you're getting. Okay, okay. We're gonna go short. Do it. So with cutting a fringe and creating a lot of texture into the hair, we need a lot of tension. Grab that hair and literally hold it down like almost flat to the forehead. Now I'm gonna take my razor. I love the Samvia swivel because I can just really be an artist and carve and slide and freehand cut away. So I like when the fringe have a crescent shape. So I'm gonna think about starting at my shortest piece and carving towards each side to create a crescent shape. So if you're a little scared, it's cool to be scared. Say I've been scared to cut hair before if you have. I was there too, I totally understand, but just cut the darn thing. So, tension, check it, check her out, put that razor straight up and down and just cut away. And then dramatically watch that hair fall on the floor. So the second we start to cut, like the hair is already drying, so just make sure you are cutting it as and combing or sorry, I'm sorry, combing it as we cut to start forming the shape. So holding that fringe down, carve, 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 carve. Taking the long zigzag motions, think of it like shark teeth, like really sharp and pointy. Okay. Amanda, um, what's, what's kind of the angle you're trying to create with your cutting line? We're trying to go like a house. Top of the house. Okay, so I'm holding lots of tension and taking long strokes to create that jagged edge. Now, this is just the very easy template of the haircut that we're placing in. We can go back at the end and dry cut to really customize all the signature pieces. But again, combing it into shape, because the hair is starting to set the second it starts to dry. So make sure that it's how you want it to look. Okay. And I have a quick question. Uh -huh. So, mm, I've, I've always kind of been taught to cut fringe dry because of the the danger of 
kind of like shrinkage and like all those kinds of things. So do you have tips for us when, because with razor cutting, a lot of times we want to cut wet so that we have the control and we have the slip of the razor. So what are some tips for when you're doing this kind of work wet so you don't end up with it like kind of going and like shrinking up to the hairline? Oh yeah, good question. So I was just like to visually maybe go, if you're scared about it shrinking, visually take it just a little bit longer. So if it does shrink up, you have a little bit of wiggle room to go back in and cut it shorter at the end. But as we continue to cut here, you notice I'm just taking vertical sections from the side and dragging it forward to the short, my first point of cutting is the shortest piece that we cut the fringe. Going in, holding that razor, just cutting, lots of tension, and it's already starting to take a lot of shape. So this next section is the face, meaning the face layers. So easy vertical sections, dragging it forward to the nose, And carving away. Now, if this was my guest behind the chair, what I'm actually doing is standing in front of her and turning her head from side to side. So taking a vertical slice, going forward here, using my tip of my finger as a guide to my shortest piece, and then razoring, big zigzag pieces, and watching that hair fall on the floor. So Amanda, you're working kind of short to long now from like shortest at the top out to longer at the bottom? Absolutely, yes. Okay, and do you have a target for where you're kind of going for for the long or is it just kind of like work out to those lengths? Yeah, just work it out. Um, this is a good time to do, to look her in the mirror and do a check. Mm. You know, we're in the land of wearing masks right now, but this is such an experience that we're creating that you really just want to watch it as it forms. So you can see already just in the front, this shape taking place. And this looks great here. Just watching those layers come alive. I'm gonna check for visual balance. That's good. Just by using that guide, that created balance, that visual guide rather. And you can see all that great texture coming alive. So now to the fun part, now for some drama. We're gonna take it to the layers part. So we haven't touched the back. We're gonna take a section that is hmm, like a half circle. And just gather all that hair at once. Amanda, Sanal is asking, uh, what if the client wants to have length longer in the back, can you use this technique? I think that's where you're headed, right? Is you're building length towards the back on purpose. Yes, that's okay. right. Thank you, Sonal, great question. So the reason that we're leaving the length for last is so maybe she wants to keep all that length. Maybe we wanna take it shorter, but all the hard work with the layering is gonna be done before we get to the length. All right, so let's take a half circle. Let me just get in there. All right. So this is a lot, this is a huge section. I'm a big fan of condensed cutting. For this, I'm gonna change my tool just because I want something that is going to be powerful, but also help me work really effortlessly. Now, depending on the density of your, your client's hair, this might require you using not a comb, but your paddle brush to comb through it. This is a big section. This is a huge chunk. So to keep that separate, I'm gonna take my clips 
and just clip it into the length so we don't mess with that. That's our last section. So holding that hair straight up, I'm gonna flip her around so we can see. This is a really great opportunity to hold your client, the camera, and be like, hey, capture this. And this is a, a major Instagram moment. So hold that hair straight up, imagining that there's a pole right here or a string 90 degrees from the floor to the ceiling. Hold that hair again, tension is our theme. Lots of tension and we want the layers short. So we're just gonna go in there and cut away. Wonderful. So as you can see, when I comb this down, these layers are just spilling into place. Whenever you elevate hair 90 degrees, when it falls, even though it's a big section like this, it tends to be softer. And if you notice, I was cutting upwards to create lots of chewy layers and lots of bits. We like bits with the shag. Hey Amanda, sorry to, to jump in and I'm going to kind of take you backwards just for a second. My power ran out or oh. my power went off right as I was just about to ask you one question. Um, Sonia is asking about razor angle. So can you just talk about the angle with the razor in relationship to the hair just real quick before you continue? Yeah, sorry. absolutely. Thank you. So holding the hair out. So this is the hair and going parallel in and out. So sliding against the hair, not going into it like a chop, but a nice gliding zigzaggy shark tooth or vampire fang kind of motion. Perfect, thank you. Thanks and for the Lori just asked, will these layers be connected to the top? Yeah. Check it out, does it look connected? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so now, you know, you can't half-ass the shag. So we're gonna go a little bit shorter here because whenever you leave this too heavy, heavy, it's more of a Beatles cut or, you know, a Justin Bieber kind of flop haircut and it's not free enough. So a subsection inside our big chop is going to be like a tiny little lemon section. And you're gonna wanna take just a little bit of hair from the fringe as a guide. So you notice I have a lemon section, like not a Lululemon, but a cool, just like a lemon, citrus. And I'm gonna switch tools again. We're gonna go back to our razor. And taking a little bit of hair from our fringe as a guide. We're gonna go in there and take our razor, holding the hair straight up 90 degrees and just entering in the middle and going out to the side. Lots of tension, carving away. You can see how that hair is nice and jagged and nice and, and chewy. So this is where I'll take the hair and start pushing it forward. And you can see the layers really starting to take shape. Now that they're short, the ones that wanna naturally spill in the back and create that volume will do so. And then everything just forms into place. So here's one of the things I'm definitely noticing as you're working. You're right, you can't half-ass this. Like, I think that that's why a lot of people don't get the result they're looking for with this kind of haircut because they don't go nearly as aggressive as you are with all of the all of the sections that you're taking with the razor you're going super deep onto the interior out to very very long pieces 
and allowing for that to have so much just like texture and movement and kind of internal disconnection. Cause I think people just get so afraid of not having this outline that's got these perfect edges. But if you look at all of Manda's benchmarks in the back, there are no edges. It's all kind of terminating in these wispy light airy bits. So um, we, we have to be willing to get as aggressive as she's showing us to, to have it turn out that way. Right. It's aggressive, right? But it's also soft. In my opinion, aggressive would be if I just chopped it straight across. That to me is hard. That's not going to create lightness and airiness. And like we said before, like all the best shags have lightness and look full, but aren't heavy. So that line is way too hard. And just for the folks out there that might be a little afraid of these short layers, I want to really show you that it's not scary. So I'm going to take the section that I just cut aggressively, in my opinion, elevate it straight up 90 degrees, go in with a razor and take these layers a little bit shorter. So big, chewy, teethy bits. Lots of tension, holding that hair straight up 90 degrees. And oh, what a relief. It's soft, in my opinion, again. And then just give it a massage. And we can watch that hair just spill where it needs to go. Effortless, easy, rock and roll hair. There's no product in this. It's all air drying on its own because of the type of cutting and sectioning that this is. It really styles itself. Effortless hair does not need to be hard. The only thing we need to remember is like, don't be scared to, to cut it. So shall we get to the length? I love how this looks. This is amazing for like our guests that want to keep it, it long, but this is a bit disconnected. So how we're going to connect the really short front to the, the long bits in the back is to continue the, the type of sectioning that we were doing on the, on the face. So, hey, before you attack that perimeter, can I ask a couple questions? Yeah. So we're getting lots of questions about hair density and texture. So oh. have you done this kind of haircut on someone that has kind of finer, thinner hair? Yes. Great question. I have fine and thin hair too. I can totally relate. It's scary. You want your lengths as much as possible. So to modify to, um, to do the same haircut, same sectioning on a fine hair guest, what can we do? Simply do a smaller section on this top layer and be sure to clip that fine hair down so we don't touch it. Nice. So the thicker you want it to look, the more hair you leave on the bottom. Yeah, perfect. This is something that Sam teaches a lot for fine hair is to move that detachment point just higher onto the head. So that way it leaves a larger section through the sides and back to keep some density in the ends. Cause that's what our fine hair guests look at, right? Man, they don't really pick up their layers up here and go, hey, look, the ends look thin on the layers on top they come to the perimeter and they look at the perimeter and say, oh, look, my ends look thin. So we have so much freedom to work in this top crown area if the ends have that density to it. Absolutely. Um, but also you kind of want the ends to look a little bit chewed up, right? Like you don't right. want to be blunt because the haircut won't match. So we're keeping all the length, we're keeping, um, keeping all of it, but these little tails, they need to be shaped up a bit. And we also want to connect the short layer to the length. So taking a vertical section again and just dragging that hair forward. I'm My visual guide is her nose, it's eye level. And I'm gonna take a different shear and go in there and simply remove some of the, the solid line. So it's gonna to start to blend, meanwhile, still being wispy. So another vertical section, taking all that hair, the visual guide right at the nose, starting to chop away. 
like cutting outward. I hope this is very easy for you guys to remember. Fringe, face, layers, and now we're doing the length. This is the exciting part when you can really see the cut coming alive. And then we're gonna take it to the side. Same thing. Pick up where we left off. Lots of hair. Visual guide, I'm like right in her face, putting my finger like right at the nose. and cutting outward to create texture. Wrapping it around, same thing. Beautiful. So everything's coming from center back, getting over directed all the way forward to that point on the face that you referenced, like where you're standing in front of the face? Yes. Okay. Yep. Beauty. So check it out, y'all. People are loving this, man. The Rocker, mullet, shag, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that was the most technical that I can do. Everything else is like pure artistry. So I'm looking at her in the mirror. I'm starting to hand style. I'm watching where those layers are flipping. I'm looking for weight. I'm looking for whatever just feels a little off. And then we're gonna go in there and, and detail it. So the general cut, it's done, but this is where we put our signature piece. This is what's gonna make the haircut your own, is what you do after the, the original chop. So I'm seeing that I don't like this heavy bit here. I'm using my new Artist Series slide cutters. I love these because you get such a clean, sharp chop especially when we're working on the ends, sometimes a razor I feel can like shh, make the ends real mad. So I love a crisp line, especially in my detailing work. So just gonna go throughout, style as we go, cutting as we style. And this is a real organic feeling. So the, the lengths from the back aren't really in connected necessarily, but now you're kind of going through and creating those points that it's like, oh, well, maybe this is too disconnected or like, oh, this is kind of hanging out of place. So you're kind of creating that visual connection. Yes, visual connection, but great point, Andrew. This is a, a crucial part that we can't miss if you do not want it to look disconnected. So it looks good this way. But how you can really see if you connected the layers is when you tilt the hair back. I'll have my guests put her head back in my chair and I will get down on the floor and just look through the interior. Oftentimes it's on the sides that is still way too heavy and I can really see it from this angle. So going in there and slide cutting the weight bits out Again, just creating a lot more texture. Have her look the other way, or actually just turn the chair so it's easy on our bodies. And I'm visually connecting the lines. So check it out. Does that look connected or disconnected? It's pretty connected in its own right. Yeah, I think that that's the key is that we're, there's a kind of a paradigm shift, right, Nana? Because in school, we're all taught, I mean, you know, the teacher at school is pulling out our section and if they see something that far off, they're like, oh, there's a corner, chop it off, you know? Which is good because what they're teaching us is how to make those kind of harder edges, more precision lines. But the challenge is they've kind of baked into our mentality that everything has to touch and match. And the reality is, is that if you want this texture, 
you can't have everything blend together. That's what Sammy always talks about, like the blenders out there. And people are always like, well, what do you mean by blend? And he just means everything having to touch and match to, you know, feel blended together. But this kind of haircut, if you blend all this together, it will not look this way. You're going to spend two hours going back through and tearing through it with texturizing, texturizing, texturizing. And you're probably still not going to get what Manda has here, which is just such a fresh, beautiful texture. Oh my gosh. I can so relate to that back in beauty school, just like having like checking for guides mm -hmm. and, and all that. And then when I learned about thinning shears, like going back in and just over thinning things, there's a right. difference between thinning and creating texture. So you notice all the techniques that I did was with a razor cutting out towards the tips and with the shears cutting outwards towards the tips because that's what puts the, the air through it. Yeah. Um, there was a question, I can't find it. Kind of the opposite direction though is what modifications would you make for this for very super thick hair? Oh yeah. So for thick hair, Think about like all the hair in front of her face. That's like a lot of weight and all that can be afforded to just cut away. So if the hair is super, super thick, I might go in and cut it like to the hairline. Soup, not to the hairline, but just a little bit away from it. Because when the hair is thick, when you swing the length forward, it's going to, cover it up. So that's a way to debolt thickness. And then the other way, I sh I'm sure you all know the answer already, is just taking more hair out of that layer. So like sometimes we'll go all the way almost down to the ridge here and that will be so much hair. And we'll take all of this, chop super short. So as she's starting to dry, we're noticing the shape taking place. This is its most basic form. This is the ultimate wash and go. If we were to go in there and just elevate it a little bit and refine it a little bit, would you guys be interested in maybe some styling techniques to take it to the next level? Yes. <laughs> Can you make some product recommendations for someone that, like, you mentioned wash and go with this? So, yeah, tell us about, like, product recommendations. Oh, yeah. So, before we cut, we should use some sort of cutting lotion or just a primer or any sort of leave-in conditioner that you like to make the, the hair cut nicely, and then it's, it's in there. So, as it's styling, it's, like, not getting fuzzy, and there you go. Um, if we were to hand style, whatever your favorite like balm is out there, I recommend something that's creamy. You can rub in your hands like lotion, showing your guests like how to apply the product. And in a raw form, like very minimal, have that product in your hand and start with the short layers and work that product in and like just let that sit out of the way for a second. Because the customization is really like what's happening in the front around the face. I want to go in and like accentuate the flickiness, the bits. The product's already emulsified on my hand, so I just keep pulling from the well of my palm instead of adding too much product. Bending and just pushing that hair forward. And then just really like pulling on the ends to create definition. And then giving it a nice like scrunch or a crunch, or whatever you want to call this motion. Just like really getting your hands into it. And you can see the texture being built the more we touch it. So what to do with this? After you have all the layers around the face sculpted out and texturize how you want them, 
this is where the fun happens, where we take the short layers and we get to like spill them forward. When you take it layer by layer like this, this is what gives that such visual texture. This is what people are wanting. And be sure to like push your layers forward for a true shag. Easy. So a little bit of a similar version, same haircut last night, different product. I put hairspray in her fringe just to make it a little bit more pointy. Beautiful. Now, next, this is air dried, a little hand styling. What can we do to make it even more defined with the layers and the flicks? Blow dryer with a nozzle, such an easy tool. Take the places that you want to find, just go in there. A little heat. You can see the layers just flicking out. Oh yeah. Another hot tip for the lengths, if you want to define it a bit more, take one of the tails, we'll call them, take some of the lengths, and in your hand, do an accordion style. So fold, 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 and with the heat, I'm just gonna direct it onto the hair in my hand. Give it a smush, and the accordion comes open, and we have some definition, almost like we did a finger wave. When it's dry, just massage that wave open, and that's how you can get more visual texture. So easy. That was the coolest trick ever. So easy. That was amazing. <laughs> so easy. I love it. You know what's rad, man? That is, is like everything you're doing is just art. It, it's not, I don't know. I don't want to call it it's not haircutting, but you are so visual with this process. It's not like, okay, we'll pick up this brush, take this exact section, do this. It's just like, yeah, just cut the darn thing. It, it's so cool. It's so refreshing, especially for someone like me, because I'm so technical. I'm so like, I need to have those sections the right way. And I have to have this technique down. And I love how you're just treating this as fabric and just working with the fabric. It's so cool. Truly. It just, just cut the darn thing, right? Yeah. And this is just raw, like off the grid, underground haircutting. It's instinctive. It's instinctive. It's instinctive. Instinctive, yes. Like, totally. It's a feeling. It's an energy. It's rock and roll. It's it's this sacred spirit. It's community. It's passion. It's dangerous. That means like it's an outlet to change things. You just got to like be confident in yourself and just go with it, like trust it. So to so accordion it again, easy guys, like just zigzag it up in your hand, a touch of heat. Compress it, give it a second. All of us uh, styling pros out there, heat, tension, cooling are the three elements. So I got my heat, I got my tension, and now it's cool. And when it comes out, we got this super raw, like, Badass curl going on. Again, our hands, our best tool. Think of this like sculpture, putting our spin on it, taking the bends and accentuating it, clearly just opening them up. You want it to like just be airy and lightweight. And the hair's still damp at this point, right? You're working with damp hair at this point? This hair is about 95% dry. Okay, cool. So it can yep. be fairly dry to do this. Yep. Cool. And we had a question about curly hair too. I'm sure okay. you've worked with curly hair with these kind of cuts. Can you share a little bit about that too? Oh yeah. 
So same everything that we just did. It's just a different fabric, treating those pearls as the unique texture that they are. Um, I find that anytime you over touch pearls, they start to get fuzzy or they can, or they start to grow. So instead of letting it air dry like this, air dry like this, perhaps you have to spray with more water as you continue to cut until it's done or you add different products. But really like a shag is a shag. This is the most simplified formula that I can possibly share with you. Just treat everyone as the individual that they are, all as the unique fabric they are, and you will have no problems. Okay, so if you wanna give a little bit more definition, like especially what's super hot and popular is the curtain bangs. All you gotta do is get in there with your round brush and take the hair right in the fringe, just scoop it, and I'll drag that hair in my brush like down before I even turn my blow dryer on. It's gonna be a diagonal back. I'm gonna keep keep keep. And as it's cooling, gently swoop it away. And here you have more of a refined look. More definition. So again, same thing on this side. All we're doing, putting that blow dryer in there, rolling it down the forehead along the face. Diagonal back, and as we're releasing, we're thinking about where we want that hair to flip. And you can see how this is just a bit more polished. Again, putting our own signature on it, taking that hair, giving it a crinkle, putting your flavor on it. And that just completely changed the look. going on over there bud <laughs> i you're killing me you're killing all of us you have had over 500 people watching constantly through this show and that number has not dipped like this is <laughs> insane and you just have a constant stream of people saying that how fresh it is how nice it is to not just see a bob again which i'm kind of like I gotta stop teaching bobs, <laughs> you know? <laughs> We've gotta freshen things up. There, There's just a constant string of comments about how much they're learning. And I, I can't say this enough, I'm just like super inspired by almost how little you're doing by getting and just these incredible effects from it because just that little 10 seconds of blow drying on the fringe I would have turned that into a whole technique, Amanda. Like I would, <laughs> I would have made that into a ten-minute YouTube video, and it would have been just as easy to do exactly what you did there. And it's so perfect because you do get that touch of polish and finish, but you're not overworking all this other stuff that already has great texture. I think we get really obsessed with once we start putting that blow dryer in we in our hand that we have to blow dry every single piece of hair with a brush. We have to touch every piece with the flat iron. I, I'm just speaking from my own experience. Like that's how I feel a lot of times. And I know that, you know, that the hairdressers are work that way. So um, this is so refreshing to just see, yeah, just do what needs to be done. I love that. Thank you, Andrew. So again, with just polishing what needs to be polished, I'm doing a visual check and looking at the surface, look at maybe what might be a, just a little bit fuzzy. And I grab that hair. And I'm doing, Sam taught me this trick, it's called a push wave. So using my crucial new midnight blue iron, I'm stoked on. I've never had a tool that's not black. I'm breaking out of my comfort zone for this. We're gonna give a push wave, pushing that hair into the head, giving it a little rub before we compress because we don't want that annoying crease in the hair. So a little bit of heat on the top, on the bottom, give it a push, read where the hair naturally wants to go, and in we go. Push, 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 tap, tap, tap. I am keeping my iron stationary. I'm just chomping away. And my hand that's feeding it into it is creating a really soft S pattern. 
And you can see up close, it's like a finger wave, but then again, using our hands to massage and expand and even stretch the tail down a bit, you can see it just come alive. And it still matches with the natural texture, but just adding a little bit more definition and a little bit more polish. I, I just want to call this out because I think this is the most adorable thing on the planet. Your grandmother just started watching and said how proud she is of you. Oh. My heart is like bursting inside my chest. <laughs> oh, grandma, I love you. Yeah, I'm like tearing up over here. It's so cool. My grandma is like the most crafty, awesome babe. Like in beauty school, I colored her hair bright red, like 5RR. Sharon Osborne was her inspiration. She let me practice on her. Good to, good to have you here, grandma. Okay, so how's it look, guys? We transformed this head of hair so easily. We did a full haircut and multiple styling techniques in less than an hour. Behind the chair, I book mm, 90 minutes for the full experience. Um, so we, we did the damn thing today. <laughs> um, yes, Andrew. Yes. I'm, I'm just shaking my head in agreement. Keep going. Okay. So I just want to point out a couple of things, you know, like as soon as you cut a fringe and put in some layers around the face, the client becomes more aware of themselves. They become confident. They evolve. You know, I see it and I feel it every time that I cut a shag, which I have quite a shag clientele right now. I'm so glad that this is trendy and I want to cut shags forever. Um, you know, like you cut a shag and it's magic. The transformation from start to finish is simply magic. Um, you do need guts to go there, but it's just a test to like the power we have as hairdressers to transform how people look and feel about themselves. Check it out. Like if you wear a plain button up shirt and have a ponytail and jeans and you go out in the world, you're like frumpy or like a soccer mom or something, right? You wear the same outfit, but have a shag. You go out into the world, you have confidence you are like being looked at, you're interesting and cool. This is definitely a mood and there's attitude behind it. There's spirit behind it. It's liberating and it's the best part, universally flattering. A shag looks good on everyone. Everything you do, like is just customized for your guests. Like, is she wide here? Do we need to cover some things? Do we want to like open her eyes up? Do we want to create a longer looking forehead. It's just so signature and so customized. Everyone is different. I think that's another thing that I, I feel is so perfect with this, man, is that this is so customizable the way that you showed us because it's not this, okay, take perfect one inch sections, elevate to this exact elevation, use this exact finger angle what you showed us today was how to uh, sculpt hair to the head, which still is hard for me, to be honest with you, because I'm so technical, but yeah. I'm so inspired by this. And like, honestly, like y'all asked me to do this class and I'm like, I don't know how to teach this. I will try my best, <laughs> but um, it's really a spirit. It's a feeling mm -hmm. just, we're all good hairdressers. We're on here taking education. You know what to do. Just take it to the next level. Create a transformative experience. So this one, same haircut, modified a few things, kept some tendrils in front of the face, took the layers a little bit shorter all throughout. And this is more of the mullet zone. Same exact techniques that we did. As far as sectioning, different look, same elements. Here is maybe a more commercial kind of feeling. Same elements, just modified it, took some bits a little bit shorter. Also had the top layer overhang to spill over so you can get that like skater boy swooshy look 
and then having the shorter bits around the face, hug on your neck and spill around. This babe is same technique, but just custom side. Wanted to take it really short around the hairline and also underneath some hidden bangs, but then we can spill the lengths over. This one was inspired by my travels in Berlin and also David Bowie. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just gonna say kind of Ziggy Stardust era. Oh yeah. Yeah. And a really cute mullet, but also like the shape is just fit to form the head. Yeah. Look at how many different results Manda was able to achieve with a similar approach. So cool. Hey, um, just before we wrap up, we've had a couple comments about how much they liked the color. Can you just give us a quick overview of the color on the mannequin head? Oh, gladly. Love talking about color, something I feel extra grounded in. This is a, this was actually a technique that I did in, in New York with some friends who are on board. Jorge Perez, we did a, a program up there. Um, this is just a permanent color, 5RR if you wanna know the specific formula, and then two sections in the front that were lightened, and then I did a vivid overlay, which is on the floor. It was rainbow, but we cut it all off today. Um, so again, same with color, like working smarter, not harder, just like taking small sections and making them really impactful. This is 5RR color fusion, if you want to know, and then City Beats is on top. This one is a natural mannequin, the yellow in it. It's an expired color that you can't get anymore. It's Redken color fusion yellow. So a permanent color to lift and expose that bright yellow. This was a color pop technique. Maybe some of you saw me and Ruth Roche teaching a class together on Salon Centric. This was the mannequin in there. It's a color pop. So one splash of color in the crown and one in the back and then green on top of everything to make it cohesive. Simple. Same thing here, color pop technique. There's a splash of color underneath and a splash of color right here. Everything else is natural, but it has some impactful placement there. Uh, color. It's awesome. And it fits the it fits the work so perfectly too. Well, unfortunately, Amanda, I think we're going to have to shut down the Samvia channel because I think you dropped so many bombs that it's officially just like exploded into a billion pieces. Everyone's mind is just like shattered with in <laughs> inspiration. So um, I, sorry guys, I, I think this is the last show ever. We're just gonna shut down the channel now. No, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> never stop learning. <laughs> um, so, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanna tell you, just so you know, the entire time you've been on, this has been blowing up. In fact, look look who has been texting me. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Ooh, there. Who is it? Oh, it's Sam Via. Huh. That's yeah. interesting. Sam has been blowing up my phone and just like, oh my gosh, Amanda's doing so awesome. Dana and Kurt. Like, I'm just getting message after message. Like our whole team has been watching you and just compliment after compliment about how incredible you are and what fresh energy, what fresh inspiration you've brought to the community today. This has been one for the record books, Amanda. And you should be very, very proud because you're not, it's not like you've been, you know, teaching on huge stages all your life. I mean, you're still a pretty fresh artist. And for you to come and bring this level of education, you should feel incredibly proud. Thank you. I don't know what to say to that. Just thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> oh, yeah. There will be more of them. Promise. <laughs> um, I just have one thing for everyone. If you're not sure about rock and roll, I actually customized and curated a playlist for all of you. I'm gonna post on my Instagram app right after this. So if you're going to the salon today or going on a drive, put on that Spotify playlist and it's gonna be like some, some rock and roll that just like gets my soul on fire. 
So just add me on Instagram. And uh, that playlist is was made for all of you. You're the coolest by far. I, I feel so uncool now because you have just taken cool to a whole new level. <laughs> it's so weird when people say that. I'm like, I'm a nerd. I have like Lord of the Rings action figure collections and like Star Trek novels. That just raises your cool factor. Sorry. <laughs> Man, the, on behalf of the entire team here at San Diego, uh, thank you so much for spending your morning with us. We also so appreciate, guys, you have to understand how much work she put into this, how much practice went into this, how much preparation went into this, just for a 55 minute segment. Yeah, just thank you from all of us here at Sambia. Thank you all. Rock and roll, baby. Whew, man, I don't know about you guys. I, I feel like my mind is just exploding with inspiration right now. I can't wait to jump onto a mannequin head and cut some hair at this point. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, just a reminder, tomorrow we have Wellness Wednesday. We have our good friend, Steve Gomez, who's an incredible business coach. Even if you're not a business owner, we would still encourage you to tune in because he's gonna talk about leadership and how important leadership is at this point in our careers and our lifetimes. Definitely don't wanna miss that. And then coming up on the weekend of the 18th, we have a really cool show must go on for you. We have some incredible haircutting, some incredible art artistry that's gonna be happening. So more to come on that, stay tuned. We'll have that posted very soon. But thank you all for watching. Thank you all for tuning in and being so supportive and so loving of Amanda. We hope you had a great time today. We'll see you soon.